boxing community was shocked when one of its own, Tommy Morrison, came forward with the same startling news. Boxers by trade are supposed to be made of steel, elusive, yet powerful. In the ring, Tommy Morrison fought with reckless abandon. Outside the ring, Tommy Morrison lived with reckless abandon. Eventually, one or the other had to catch up. I was informed just a little while ago that uh, those tests do in fact confirm that I have tested positive for the HIV virus. To all my young fans out there, I'd ask that you no longer see me as a role model, but see me as an individual that had the opportunity to be a role model and blew it. Now, Tommy Morrison starts a new fight, but this time, it's for his life. Today, for the first time, Tommy Morrison will speak openly and from the heart to a live studio audience filled with young people and to the millions of you at home about the greatest battle of his life. Everyone, please welcome Tommy Morrison. Are you surprised at, at that kind of reception? Yeah, I am. Uh, I've always been a very guilt-prone athlete, and I've always had a history of being pretty hard on myself. Uh, and now this is uh, having to pay the ultimate price for being irresponsible. Yeah. How do you feel now, right now? I mean, how, how is it going? I'm holding it together pretty good. Uh, I think I've a little bit in denial at this point. I uh, haven't totally accepted the fact that this has happened to me, uh, but I'm dealing with it each and every day. I think I'm accepting it a little more. It, are you in denial because physically you feel so good? I feel great. I mean, I haven't, uh, I haven't been sick in three years. I'm bigger, faster, stronger than I've ever been in my life. Uh, so this came as a, uh, a huge shock to me because this year was, was going to be my year, you know, and uh, now it's all, it's all over. Do you still think about, I mean, Forget about the payday, but you were working up to a huge fight with Mike Tyson. We had a series of fights mapped out uh, this year that, uh, that would have been uh, phenomenal uh, for myself. And also, uh, you know, we're talking another world title. And also the opportunity to compete against uh, what a lot of people think is one of the best heavyweights in the world, and that being Mike Tyson. That was all mapped out and uh, was going to happen this year. But uh, due to the situation, it's all, it's all gone. You say you're still in denial. What was it like for you when you were first told? I could tell by the look on their faces that uh, I figured they were going to tell me that the, maybe the, you know, the fight got canceled or uh, maybe my fighter pulled out. But uh, it was very apparent to me that uh, you know, something wasn't right. And uh, Tony uh, Holden, my promoter at the time, uh, said there's, no really, there's not really an easy way to tell you this. He just came right out and told me, which my initial response was, I've got to get some, some more blood drawn and, and make sure uh, that this is for sure a fact. So at that point, you didn't want to believe the No, the I, news. I, was, uh, I had a hard time believing it. I yeah. really did. I mean, you never, you never picture something like this happening to you. Uh, this is a disease that a lot of people associate with people that subject themselves to certain types of lifestyles, uh, IV drug users, things like that. Uh, you, know, you look at the Magic Johnson situation, you see, well, he lives in L.A., there's 8 million people there, there's 30 different lifestyles. Not many. He not, shouldn't live in L.A., right. you know, and that, that was my attitude toward that. But I live in J. Oklahoma. You didn't Oklahoma. know anybody in J. Oklahoma who had it? 2,000 people, you know, and uh, it got me. And so you ordered another test. Now the next test comes back. I was, uh, we had some initial tests uh, run. Uh, we were waiting on uh, the news of, of all this, the... Uh, I guess the speculation that I had tested positive beat me back home. I left Las Vegas. Uh, How did that make you feel? That was, uh, well, when I landed in the airport three hours later in Tulsa, leaving from, Oka or from uh, Las Vegas, when I got off the airplane, it was about midnight, and I walked and was walking through the, the terminal there, and I looked up at uh, a little group of people standing around television, and, uh, and there I was on there. And uh, that in itself was hard to deal with. Uh, I just kind of 
pulled my hat down and <laughs> walked onto my car. I mean, is that the way you felt? That you I really did. I was embarrassed. Anyway. Yeah, I was. I mean, because it's like I say, there's a. My first reaction was, what are people going to think? You know, I mean, uh, here I am, a supposed to be a big tough guy, and uh, and I think I walked around in life thinking that I was bulletproof, and now I got to pay the ultimate price. Who was able to tell your fiance? I uh, phoned her from the plane and uh, told her that I had, in fact, failed my medical exam. I didn't tell her why uh, until I got home. You know, I wanted to be in front of her before I told her. And uh, when I walked in, I put down my bag and I sat her down and told her just as soon as I got in the door what had happened. Uh, she held it together much you know, a lot better than I thought she would. Uh, she didn't really care. She knew that we were having some initial tests done and uh, that there is, you always hang your hat on that possibility that there was a screw up. But when we got the other test back and I found out for sure, we had to, I had to make a statement, had to have a press conference. And I know, and, and, it, people... and it was an eloquent statement. And I think anybody who saw parts of that press conference uh, can now see. I mean, a, a lot of people, a lot of people probably, uh, when they uh, take a look at your life at, at this point, Tommy, will say that might have been your founding style. Nothing, nothing that went, went, went on in the ring, but the responsibility that you accepted at that press conference. Well, I, I realized that I had lived a very reckless life, and, uh, you know, a lot of people wonder, well, how did you get it? Uh, I don't know how I got it. I don't outrule the possibility of having picked it up in the ring. You know, this is a... You won't rule out that possibility? I certainly wouldn't. I mean, this is a blood sport. You know, over the years, I've dealt with thousands of sparring partners. I've had 49 professional fights, and I led a crazy lifestyle for a right. few years, so... Because most people, because you admitted this, this reckless lifestyle, that that was probably because of your years of promiscuity and, and recklessness. That, I mean, that was... this was, I assume, where you got it, but who knows? Well, you don't really know. You know, I, I know that, uh, you know, you're talking about boxing, it's a blood-on-blood -blood sport, and uh, it is a possibility. Uh, leading a reckless lifestyle for a, a number of years probably didn't help any. But if I can somehow get out there and educate not only myself, but other people, uh, if I can make one high school or college kid have a more responsible attitude towards sex, then that would be a bigger victory than I could have ever won in the ring. When, when it came to your sexual lifestyle, I mean, it just doesn't come. I mean, it, was this a long time? Uh, there was a period of about three or four years there where I was, I was out of control. I mean, I had reached a point where uh, I lived in Kansas City at the time. I lived there for about six years. Is this after you won the title from George Foreman? Uh, this was uh, sh all along for six years, you know. I mean, they, uh, obviously, the winning the, the, the fight uh, against George Foreman, the first world title that I won, uh, was a very gratifying moment for me. Uh, at that time, things seemed to get out of control. I handled it up until that point, and I surrounded myself with the type of people that really didn't have my best interest at heart and allowed myself to get sucked into that sort of lifestyle. And you had the attitude that I'm immune, I'm bulletproof, couldn't happen to me. Maybe it happens to Magic because he's out in L.A. and he maybe lives a different lifestyle than I. Uh, maybe it happens uh, to those who use uh, drugs. Maybe it happens to those who uh, uh, have a homosexual lifestyle preference, but it's not going to happen to me, Tommy Morrison. I mean, you never even thought about it. Right? Not even not in a million years. I mean, I, I really honestly thought that, you know, I had a better chance of winning the lottery than something like this happening. But uh, I'm here to tell you that it's for real. It changed my whole life, you know, and will continue to change it. Uh, this is something that obviously will in some way put a strain on the relationship that I have. So it's going to be tough to deal with. We'll talk about that strain. We'll talk about your family and your friends and whether anybody has turned their backs on Tommy Morrison and who's stuck with him after this. I hope that I can serve as a warning that living this lifestyle can only lead to one thing. And that's misery. I'd ask that you no longer see me as a role model, but see me as an individual that had the opportunity to be a role model and blew it.
What did you mean by that, not being a role model? I think at the time, I, I uh, felt a lot of shame. Uh, I didn't want to be looked upon as a role model. I pretty much wanted to be looked upon as someone that had the opportunity and, and screwed it up. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, since as, I've, as ultimately a loser. Sure. As, as soon as I found out the opportunity that I had here to get out and to educate not only myself but everybody else, then I felt that there was, uh, you know, for every 10 people I heard, I want to help 100. Yeah. Tommy, how angry are you at yourself because of, because of what has happened? I, I'm very guilty. I think it's not so much, at first it was anger, and now it has... How does that change? How does anger go to guilt? I think at I mean, first... you want to punch a wall? No, I haven't punched anything yet. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I had enough anger where I felt that I wanted to do something like that, but I'm, I've gotten a little wiser as I've gotten older. So, uh, you know, in, uh, I was just real guilty. And, uh, you know, anger at first for believing that it happened and, and accepting the idea that it did, in fact, happen. And then uh, after it sets in, then you feel very guilty and very shameful for being so irresponsible. You know, we have, uh, our generation has totally disregarded our moral value teachings that were taught to us by our parents. And uh, we teach sex as a sort of social behavior. Lisa Tiger is also from Tommy's home state of Oklahoma. Now we've heard that Tommy usually feels that people in Oklahoma, especially if you're living in a small town, you know, Age is, it, it's a foreign country. Lisa had her whole life in front of her. No one ever imagined, especially Lisa, that she would get AIDS. And you got it because what? You messed around with the wrong guy, Lisa? Yes, I was involved in a relationship for three years. And I thought I was safe in this relationship because if you were heterosexual and uh, monogamous, then you were supposed to be okay. And I was like Tommy. I, I thought that AIDS was on the East Coast, the West Coast. I thought it would eventually come to Oklahoma, but it just wasn't there yet. And this guy gave you the virus? Yes. I don't know if it was denial that he was in or just that he was angry. I've, I've heard that people sometimes have the attitude, if I'm going to die, I'm going to take as many people with me as and I can. And you tried to take, uh, uh, you tried to take him to court, didn't you? Yes, I pressed criminal charges, but in the state of Oklahoma, there's no law that protects you against that. It no. says that if you knowingly have HIV, and intentionally try to infect somebody, but the word intent is impossible to prove. I would like to have this guy as a sparring partner. <laughs> Lisa, what keeps you going all the what keeps you going every day? Well it's what's your inspiration? I have a lot of different inspirations. The new inspiration that I have is I've taken custody of four children and they're ages three, four, five, and six. And they were sexually and physically abused, and I, hopefully I can give them a better life than they've had up till now. Right. Um, I have a question. I have a question for Tommy. Did you ever consider the possibilities of being HIV positive before you found out you were? Uh, no, I never did. I, even though I knew that I had, over the years, been with a number of women, I, uh, uh, I always thought that I could tell a classy lady from a more undesirable lady. <laughs> you know, every guy has that party where, you know, you can, you know, a classy chick from a trashy chick, that sort of thing. And, Do you uh, think, you know, Tommy, I mean, I, and of course I'm not there, but I'm a guy and I, I mean, I, and, and the lifestyle that you told me about in terms of you lived, I mean, I've watched that and in, who knows, in parts of my life I was a little wilder than at other times in my life. Have you ever tried to pinpoint it down? I mean, do you start thinking, who was it? I, uh, I think some, somewhere along the line I, I will, but at this point, you know, where I got it, I mean, do you have it down to it. five women or ten women? I mean, can you say, <laughs> maybe it was her? I mean, who, I mean... I, I'm really, I'm really unsure. I, I really don't know. But uh, I, I think what's important is not how I got it or where I got it. I think very few people really care about that. But what matters is where you go from here, right? The important thing here is that we accept responsibility for ourselves. I have the responsibility to protect myself. I didn't do that. So he has the responsibility to protect himself. He didn't do that. We are responsible for our own actions. Right. When we come back, we have a surprise for Tommy Morrison. You don't want to miss it after this. <laughs>
have a surprise for you, Tommy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former heavyweight boxing champion of the world, <laughs> Olympic gold medal winner, Smokin' Joe Frazier. <laughs> guy this is about the closest guy they say has a left hook almost like mine but uh, <laughs> uh, you had a great one is Tommy making the right decision to retire from boxing I would say uh, yes uh, I know Tommy wouldn't want anything to happen to his opponent uh, let's say the guys within the ring around the ring you know right. what I mean so you think it's a good decision I think it's a good decision yes. okay we'll be back right after this Tommy Morrison Joe Frazier, Jonathan, Lisa. Yes. I have a question for Tommy. How um, does your fiance feel about the HIV virus thing, and are you two still together? Uh, at this point, we, we're still together. Uh, obviously, I feel that this situation is going to put a strain on that relationship. I know that we, both of us, are going to find out as far as preventative measures, that sort of thing. But this is something that and she's a girl. You mean there's a, a chance that you could split up? I think there's always a possibility. I think the long-term effect of uh, on this relationship will probably give me that answer. Uh, I don't know. Would you like to stick together? I think that that is her decision. You know, I told her that she has the opportunity to leave if she wants and i would have no choice but to understand her boy that I, I, i'm sorry i sorry i mean i that kind of hit me just now i didn't i didn't know that was you know that sounds like a strong possibility that, that what you're saying is you're putting it in her court it's it's her decision and i would ha have to understand it if she did in fact but she wants kids she wants to i don't feel like i want to cheat her out of that opportunity uh, this is a very important person, particularly in Jonathan's life and to so many other kids. This is Neil Willinson, and Neil runs a camp. And Jonathan, you're, you're part of this, aren't you? Yeah. And what's the name of the camp? Camp Heartland. We have 500 kids like Jonathan, somehow affected by AIDS. Either they have AIDS or they have a sibling with it or have lost uh, someone to AIDS. And, and you've done this on your own. You started when you just had a few kids, and now it's grown so much over the last four or five years. Kids like Jonathan are, are my inspiration. There, there is hope. He's proven. He's living 10 years beyond what the doctors said. Tommy, Lisa, Jonathan, there is hope. Just keep on fighting every day. Okay. Uh, I want to thank Joe. Joe, thank you so much for being here. Joe Frazier, I appreciate your coming. You're such an inspiration to so many people. Jonathan, you got a lot more fans now. Let me tell you, there are millions of people out there who've watched you today, and they think of you as the biggest of heroes. <laughs> Lisa, what you've done for yourself after you, unfortunately, uh, were at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong man, uh, should be an inspiration to so many as well. Thank you. And Tommy, this is the beginning of a long road for you. Mm -hmm. And I think you've taken the right steps. And I think uh, whether you knew of Tommy Morrison as a boxer before or nobody ever heard of Tommy Morrison, you have a chance to have a huge impact on millions of people. That's very kind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you out to everyone. Until next time, America. Tomorrow, meet daughters who haven't seen their fathers for most of their lives. Share a special moment with them on our most emotional reunion show ever. Tomorrow. <laughs>